Perfect. All right. Well, now uh, that we're recording and we need to do this because this is a public meeting and we hold our meetings in public just like uh, our various councils do. <clears throat> so I'd like to uh, remind everybody that we're now recording it and is being live streamed on YouTube for the public. And due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, board members are each in their respective homes or places of work for the duration of this uh, recording. I'd like to uh, thank all of you who have joined us today and uh, members of the public who may be watching our live stream or later uh, the recording of the meeting itself. And uh, we always start off our uh, meetings as is appropriate with a land acknowledgement statement and, um, you know, I got to tell you, just before I get into it, I had the opportunity as our council to do an orientation around uh, just <clears throat> moving forward as a, uh, as a city of St. Albert, but as a region in terms of, of uh, truly embracing the, the truth and reconciliation and the uh, recommendations coming out of that report, but engaging just our are uh, the indigenous people that live within our communities in a way that is, uh, is appropriate and beneficial. And one of these uh, positions that was put forward was is, is that we need to acknowledge that the land that we are all on is traditional land. And so let me make this statement. So on behalf of the board, we would like to acknowledge the traditional lands, which we are virtually gathered is treaty six. We would like to thank the diverse indigenous peoples whose ancestors' footsteps have marked this territory for centuries, such as the Cree, Dene, Soto, Nakodiso, and the Blackfoot peoples. We also acknowledge this as the Métis homeland and the home of the largest concentration of Inuit people south of the 60th parallel. It is a welcoming place for all peoples who come from around the world to share the Edmonton metropolitan region as a home. And uh, it's uh, my privilege to be able to make this statement as uh, the opening statement of all our meetings. And I know that's a, a sentiment or reflected vote of, of all our councils in the region. So moving on, we have uh, the agenda that's before us and of course there's, uh, there's motions because we uh, act in public. And so I would uh, uh, entertain a motion to approve the agenda as it's presented here today. Uh, someone care to move that motion? So move, Mr. Chair, Stuart Houston. Thank you, Thank you uh, Councilor Houston. Uh, using, I think let's, Use the raise hand feature on, on the uh, Zoom. So there's a little block at the bottom. Just indicate uh, your vote by uh, ra raising your hand. And uh, Councillor Knack, I'll call for a verbal yay or nay from you. I'll be voting. Fair enough. Thank you. That's approved uh, unanimously. Thank you. And we'll lower those flags or uh, hands for the next one. And uh, so the agenda is approved. Now we'll go on to the consent agenda. And uh, someone care to move the consent agenda? Councillor Finstad, uh, do you want to read it into the uh, record? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yep. I move Great. approval of the consent agenda, which uh, incorporates a approval of November 24th, 2021 organizational board minute meetings, B, approval of December 2nd, 2021 audit and finance committee meetings, and approval of December 8th, 2021 HR and compensation committee, minute, uh, committee meeting minutes. Thank you very much for that. Uh, any comments? Okay, seeing none, I'll call the, uh, the question again uh, using the raise the hand function. Councillor Knack. I'm a yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. And that's again passed unanimously. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, moving on to item number four, uh, proposed board and committee uh, 2022 meeting schedule. Over to you, uh, Mr. Jankowski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so this is a continuation 
of a matter that was considered at the organizational meeting. Uh, at that time, during that meeting, we had presented a proposed schedule of meetings, which uh, uh, the attempt was there to try to accommodate some of the potential conflicts or avoid some of the potential conflicts, uh, particularly with regards to um, so some of the activities that Councillor Knack is in. Deferral of consideration of this matter uh, at the organizational meeting. We have worked with Councillor Knack's office and I'm happy to report that we have managed to uh, bring back the, uh, the suggestion to keep essentially the, uh, the same pattern that has been used by the, the board over the course of the 2021 meeting schedule. And that is that uh, the committee meetings will be held on the first Thursday of every that being the Finance and Audit Committee meeting. The Courses uh, uh, and Compensation Committee would meet on the second Wednesday of every month. And the board would, the board continue to meet on the third Thursday of every month. Uh, what we have done, however, is in reflection of some of the potential conflicts, we have suggested uh, a, uh, a, a varying uh, meeting start and finish times for the board meetings. Uh, and so you see a table on the right hand side of the slide, which shows the uh, the various proposed meeting start and end dates, sorry, uh, times for the, the Thursday board meetings. Uh, and you also see on the bottom half of the right hand side that we propose a consistent time for the two committee meetings on those uh, days of the first Thursday and second Wednesday of every month. So I am hopeful that this is now acceptable to the vast majority of the, the uh, uh, directors and that uh, this is uh, the recommended schedule to be approved. All right, thank you very much. Uh, throw open the floor to any questions or comments. Uh, I note uh, that the, uh, the two different shadings of the, the meeting blocks indicate uh, um, the tentative meetings and the uh, scheduled meetings. Uh, we found, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, Mr. Jankowski, that often, uh, uh, meeting for the committees every month is not required, but certainly uh, could be called based on this schedule at the request of the chairs. Uh, Councillor Harris. Notwithstanding more third, fourth, fifth, sixth, eighth waves and all that sort of stuff, do we anticipate um, in-person meetings at some uh, point in the future? Or are these going to be a hybrid with some in-person and some virtual? So in, in reflection of the board's previous direction and desire, uh, what we're planning in the fullness of time is for hybrid type meetings, which would allow uh, attendance in person or virtually uh, once we get our new office facilities up and running. Uh, so for the time being, we are suggesting that we continue with the current practice of virtual meetings and that we defer the, uh, the start of the hybrid type meetings until the, the new facility uh, on 106th Street in Jasper is ready for, our, for use as a committee meeting room, as a board meeting room facility. Uh, we have ordered now the furniture for that. We anticipate that, that uh, the furniture delivery for that, uh, that board meeting room uh, will take place sometime in the towards the end of the first quarter or beginning of the second quarter of 2022. Uh, and uh, we're hopeful that by that time, all of the COVID-related restrictions and concerns will be uh, a, a, a something viewed in the rearview mirror, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes for the time ending that we stick with the virtual meeting schedule, certainly for the, uh, the meetings in January and February. So in other words, we're going to be a nimble board. Nimble and agile, yes, sir, uh, uh, Councillor Harrison. And thanks for that update. Uh, and I know that uh, Mr. Jankowski, uh, you have further information for us later on in the meeting. And so look forward to that. 
Uh, any other comments from members of the board before I call a question or ask somebody to read the motion into the record? Seeing none, uh, Councillor Knack, any question? Uh, yeah, I was just, uh, I was happy to move it and say, uh, pr appreciate um, all the great work. I uh, appreciate you being a bit accommodating to my schedule. I, I wanted to commit to both Alberta municipalities and the Edmonton Metro Transit Services Commission and uh, this allows that that to happen and I appreciate the flexibility in the hybrid meetings too as I, I want to be in person uh, at both commitments but there will be times where I have to be hybrid at both in order to attend both so uh, just I really appreciate all the help so happy to move it if, uh, if there's no other comments. Thank you Councillor Nack and, and certainly uh, moving a meeting by an hour or two is not really a hardship and I appreciate the flexibility of the board here. Uh, but uh, Councillor Nack, thank you for your commitment to this uh, to this board uh, going forward. Any other uh, questions or comments before I read the recommendation that uh, Councillor Nack has moved into the record here for him? Okay, seeing no comments, uh, Councillor Nack, I'll read it in here for you that the board approved the proposed 2022 operating gap. Uh, that's not the one. Sorry, folks. That the 2022 meeting schedule be approved as presented. That makes a whole lot more sense, doesn't it? <laughs> Any comments? Councillor Finstad. No, I was just voting in advance. Sorry. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll call the question using the raise of the hand function. Uh, please indicate your, and um, that is passed. Uh, I'm a yes. Thank you very much, Councillor Nack. Okay, moving right along now, <laughs> not, not to get ahead of myself with the next motion, but let's uh, move on to uh, the operating capital budget in the 2023-24 outlook. Over to you, Mr. Jankowski. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and I appreciate your enthusiasm for this uh, particular matter. Uh, very happy to uh, bring this matter back as well. Uh, this as well as a continuation of the, the material that was presented initially at the organizational meeting. Uh, at the organizational meeting, the board moved that uh, the, uh, the budget material be considered further and that input provided by the board members at that organizational meeting be considered uh, further by staff and that a consolidated picture be brought forward to the, the last finance and audit committee meeting. Uh, I'm happy to say that uh, in the minutes that were moved a little bit earlier, there was a complete budget package that was included on the agenda for the finance and audit committee meeting. And I suspect that Councillor Lori may have some words that he may wish to add to this as well. What we have today is a very, very brief overview presentation. And uh, I'm really happy to have uh, Lori Shea Smith here to uh, just simply present the highlights of the, the proposed budget that was uh, moved or, or recommended for approval by finance and uh, audit committee at its meeting earlier this month. And uh, Lori will just provide the, the highlights and uh, then our recommendation and uh, request of the board is that this budget be approved. So I'll turn it over to Lori. Thank you, Paul. I'll provide, as Paul said, a very high level summary now of the budget presentation um, that was tabled November 24th and then brought forward to the Audit and Finance Committee on December 2nd. So just wanted to um, bring your focus back and um, highlight the fact that we have two focus areas for 2022. Um, th these were presented in the work plan that was uh, presented at the uh, board meeting on November 24th. So the first would be all the activities that we need to uh, move forward with for the continuation of the stand up of the organization throughout 2022. Secondly, and no less important, would be preparing for opening day service to launch early in 2023 for regional and local transit service delivery under the EMTSC banner. Our proposed 2022 operating and capital budget and the 2023-2024 outlook includes administration costs only. 
when we get into the fall of 2022, looking forward into 2023 and then beyond, we will be presenting a budget um, that includes both administration and transit service delivery costs, and then a future focused uh, capital budget at that time. Our proposed operating budget for 2022, if you could just go back, Agata, sorry. Thanks. Our proposed 2022 operating budget is 3.643 million. And then additionally, we've asked for $250,000 for our 2022 capital budget. Our year end uh, forecast for 2021 is estimated to be 2.486 million. Combined, the combined proposed 2022 operating and capital budget is 3.893 million. When we add both of those numbers together, the total stand-up costs for the commission for 2020, 2021, and 2022 is 6.379 million. All of these startup costs, including those that are included in the proposed 2022 operating and capital budgets are proposed to be debt financed. In an early 2022, we will be working with the board to action all of the requirements that are going to be needed um, to secure the, the increase to our debt financing. Thank you. All right, thank you, uh, Lori. Um, maybe as a uh, opening, why don't I turn it over to you, uh, Councillor Lori, as the chair of the Audit and Finance Committee for for comments going forward, and then I'll open the floor to the rest of the, the board for questions or comment. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I'd just like to start by thanking uh, Ms. Smith as well as uh, Mr. Jankowski for the presentation of the Audit and Finance Committee and, and coming back and really walking us through the, uh, the proposed budget very thoroughly. Um, one of the things I will say that uh, I'm most happy to see uh, was the recognition of the uh, the work that will need to be done in regards to advocacy and funding and working with the various levels of government and supporting the EMTSC through our stand up, even though we are not going to be operational until the beginning of 2023, but understanding that uh, being a transit agency in the COVID-19 pandemic, whether we are or are not currently delivering services has been a challenge and it has presented us with some significant uh hurdles in which we've had to overcome in order to become operational. So uh, a big appreciation in that. Uh, obviously, there was a little bit of concern with the, the debt financing costs in exceeding our previous self-imposed limit, uh, but those limits and, and the consideration of those were set when we believed that we would have operational revenues within 2022. Uh, obviously, with the changes that occurred now that we do not, uh, there's not a lot of actual change to the startup costs. The challenge more is that we do not have any revenues coming in to offset uh, those, those expenses at this time. Um, so we obviously will have to consider a change to our self-imposed debt limit as we proceed through 2022. Uh, however, it's well worth noting that we would still be well within our uh, debt limit as proposed by the province of Alberta in the inception of the Edmonton Metropolitan Regional Transit Service Commission. Uh, so with that, Mr. Chair, I will turn that back to you and open the floor for any comments. I will say uh, the committee members did a fantastic job of asking some good questions, some challenging questions uh, when this was through the Audit and Finance Committee. And I know our administration is well prepared to answer any questions the board has today. Thank you very much, Councillor Lori. I'll come back to you for the motion, if you don't mind. Councillor Houston, over to you. Yes, thank you very much. And I just wanted to uh, thank uh, Councillor Laurie for leadership on the uh, committee and uh, Mr. Jankowski for the approach to uh, not going back to the municipalities to ask for capital dollars in the 2022 budget, but uh, working it through a debt financing plan. So I think that was really positive for us on the committee. And I really appreciate the fact of the way we're, we're going to handle that. Uh, recognizing, of course, uh, the costs are going to be a little bit higher than we initially anticipated, but, um, you know, this is the reality of the startups and uh, looking forward to continuing the work. With that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Houston. Any other comments? Seeing none, uh, Councillor Knack, any, any comment as, uh, as we move along here? Uh, no, thank you. Not on this. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you very much. 
I too, uh, you know, I, we, we've talked about this as a board, how uh, it would be inappropriate, I think, to ask for uh, ongoing operational dollars uh, from our member municipalities prior to being in operation. I think, I think to your point, uh, Councillor Houston, that's that's there's wisdom in that. And so thank you, uh, Mr. Jankowski and Lori uh, Shea Smith for uh, you know arranging a plan that incorporates that principle. So I'll go back to you then, Councillor Lori, if you'd like to make the motion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will propose that the 2022 operating and capital budget and the 2023 through 2024 outlook be approved as presented. Thank you. I accept that motion. Any opening comments? Uh, nothing more, Mr. Chair, other than, again, just the sincere appreciation to our administration for all the hard work that has gone into this as it has changed and evolved over the last several months. Fair enough. Uh, thank you. Any uh, board member on debate? I'll, I'll ask you, uh, Councillor Knack, any debate? No, no, I'm good, thank you. All right, uh, fair enough, then I'll call the question using the raise the hand function. Uh, and I'm in please favor. vote. Thank you very much, Councillor Knack. And that's approved unanimously. Thank you very much. And we will move right along now. Proposed boarding information process improvements. Thank you very much. Over to you, Council, uh, Mr. Jankowski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I will be brief and I will be turning this discussion over to Brian Bechtel, our Director of Stakeholder Relations. Uh, a number of meetings ago, there was a discussion brought forward by the board uh, with regards to figuring out how we might be able to provide the board members with a little better quality of information and more timely information to assist in the quality of the decision making that the board needs to engage in or is engaged in on a regular basis. And uh, it was a great suggestion that was made uh, with respect to uh, the uh, initiating a discussion around how we might be able to approve that. I'm happy to say that uh, over the course of the last couple of meetings, we've made our first initial attempts in that regard. Uh, but Brian has been working over the last little while to think about and to put together a little bit of a uh, description of our suggested approach in that regard. Uh, and uh, he's got a short slide presentation that he will run through. Uh, this is provided for the board's information uh, to get input from the board, any suggestions that the board might have. We are throughout the process very conscious that the board has a, a mandate that may, may differ, differ somewhat from the mandate of individual council members acting as members of their local councils. And that, that part of it will be uh, identified and, and will be highlighted through Brian's presentation. But we are, uh, we're hopeful that uh, what we've got to present today here does meet or start to meet the, uh, the board members' needs going forward. And uh, it's something that we propose will continue to evolve as, uh, as we mature as an organization. So with that, I will turn it over to Brian to run us through the presentation and uh, we will seek the board's uh, input and direction thereafter. Fair enough, thank you. Thank you, Paul, Mr. Chairman. So uh, leading into our presentation, as Paul said, so we'll starting off with our process improvements. So uh, as Paul mentioned, uh, we, the board directors have asked the, the administration to consider the timing and circulation of board agendas. And this was uh, based partly on a desire by, board of, by directors to have enough time to consult with member municipal staff in advance of board meetings. And, also, as Paul mentioned, we have uh, had the last uh, two agenda packages out five days in advance of the meeting. Uh, so that's job one. Uh, with, that, with that done, now we can start thinking about what else can we do uh, around the, the, the board and the board process to, to uh, result in good, good decisions, good information at the board table, uh, all coming up, up with the right solution. Sorry, uh, Mr. Bechtel, did you say at a presentation or is this a verbal? 
presentation. Oh, I have a presentation. Is it not? Oh, I think I forgot to share my screen. Oh boy. Am I on there now? Uh, my apologies. No, that's no no apologies required. It's you're seeing my face, and so you please get that off of there. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I, I, I seem to have a problem here with getting my slides up. It's all right. <laughs> I love Can your you waist, but now? I don't need to see two of you, mate. Um, <laughs> okay, I apologize. Are we, are, can folks see my slides now? Not no. yet, no. Oh, boy, I'm so... There we go. Is that working? No? No, no, it's good. It's... We can All see right. it now. Sorry for the confusion. All right. Sorry for the confusion there. All right then. So going into our uh, into our uh, into our presentation here, as, as Paul mentioned, we we are looking at a uh, our overall uh, conceptual approach to decision making uh, is is one that is based on a shared regional value proposition and a vision. But within that, to be successful, we also have to have an understanding and a respect for local municipal perspectives. This is all facilitated and driven by concise and timely reporting and briefing from administration. Another mechanism that we will be using more as we proceed into more specific planning would be advice from working groups of municipal actor experts and subject matter experts. So this is a graphic that sort of conveys uh, our overall values and I think our, our general conceptual approach. So if we start at the top, what we really want to drive to is that we begin to build a knowledge of local concerns. In this way, we, we don't just want to be passive and to be waiting here at the commission at the board table for, uh, for members of the board and councillors to come and, and, uh, and to be uh, challenged by problems that are in the community. I think that if we can be more proactive and by active liaison between uh, with local staff uh, through myself and, and other staff here at the commission, we can have that kind of knowledge in advance of meetings. And a key, another key part of this, of course, is the, the ongoing liaison between the CEO and uh, his counterparts in the various municipalities. So what we have here is a, a desire to be out ahead of some of these issues and to do everything we can to assist with the local political dynamics. And that may at some point be a, uh, something that we put on social media or something that we have in our website that can kind, that can kind of help, help, help you as board members in your local communities to, uh, to respond to the local uh, concerns that you may be encountering in the course of your work. So the first phase of that would be to move out uh, the board reports and move them out to, uh, to uh, our local uh, counterparts, of course, you as board members as well, but also at the same time to move them out to our to municipal, to the staff in the municipalities uh, where you work. Uh, there are three kind of dimensions of this, and this is a uh, stakeholder relations accessibility. So this is a, a very intentional and mindful commitment on our part uh, to be accessible, to be able to answer questions. Uh, and we've uh, started to build that kind of network. So I've begun to have relationships with some of the people in the municipalities to, to facilitate this kind of uh, easy report back and forth. And then this initial will also give you an opportunity to look at the board reports and look at the upcoming decisions in the context of local concerns and to provide you with an opportunity to talk to board directors and local staff to <clears throat> really understand your, your challenges and your perspectives uh, and to uh, be able to, uh, to speak to those uh, well when it comes time before the board. The second layer of that is really talking more uh, about the regional solution that, is, uh, that has to reflect those local challenges as much as possible. We're not looking for two different solutions. We're increasingly clear to us that we're looking for a solution that uh, is regional in, in, in scope, but it also is reflective and relevant at the local level. At the end of the day, uh, if we do this work well, if we uh, can communicate well to each other uh, and with our, our counterparts in local municipalities, uh, that should bring us to a point of uh, feeling confident that the decisions that we make will have 
local understanding and acceptance and, and really at the end of the day, what we will have is the best possible regional solution. And just a few uh, more words on uh, about regional and member municipal municipal perspectives. Now, you you uh, you know how challenging this is. Uh, you many of you are challenged on, on this at other boards like EMRB. Uh, but when you're appointed by your respective councils, you are called upon as bo board directors to assume a regional perspective, which is an easy thing to say. It's not an always an easy thing to do, and that's the essential challenge of our work. Directors can, of course, still be the voice of their councils and communities in pursuit of a robust regional approach. And that is to say that a, a good regional approach does show reflection of local concerns. Uh, they can't be operating at cross purposes to the regional, but a good approach will reflect that. And it's just a simple uh, statement of fact that member municipal political perspectives on EMTSC decisions, they may differ from from regional perspectives from time to time. And again, that is the essential value proposition of our work, but it's also the essential challenge. So just talking a little bit about the, the process, uh, we uh, have, as we mentioned, we have a commitment to send out at least five business days in advance to enable local briefing. Uh, uh, we want to uh, encourage directors to, to encircle, uh, circulate packages with staff Within your, within your municipality, but while being mindful of confidentiality considerations, because sometimes those packages do include confidential information. Uh, this is something that you deal with as elected officials all the time, so it's not new information to you, but we just uh, put that proviso in there that uh, to, to, be, to bear that in mind and to be aware that sometimes the packages do contain confidential information. The CEO uh, will schedule uh, individual briefings with board members on regional perspectives prior to meetings and stakeholder relations uh, division, me, <laughs> for now, uh, liaises with designated municipal contacts to answer process questions and provide clarification, et cetera. And I've, I've been doing some of this already and I think it's working fairly well. We're starting to, uh, starting to have some good, good flow back and forth. So at the end of the day, if we, uh, if we do this well, uh, I think we can anticipate that the commitment to the timely distribution of the reports, uh, individual briefing of members of the board, and, uh, and of course, accessibility to, to the staff who are working in your, uh, in your municipalities uh, should pr facilitate productive meetings for us. Uh, out of this, we should have, uh, we will uh, emerge with a, an enhanced knowledge of the local political challenges. And one of the things that I think is really important, it's not a, it's, it's a byproduct, but it's also very intentional, is to foster positive relationships with the staff in our member municipalities. Uh, this, you know, this has always been uh, clear as a priority uh, to me in this job. And I think Paul would say the same as we're evolving, we're seeing that this is a really important dimension of our work and something that we have to be very, very mindful about that these, that these folks in these municipalities uh, have their challenges, but they work with you, they work with us. And ultimately in an ideal world, uh, these folks will be not only well-informed, uh, able to brief comprehensively, but also become potentially champions for us. They, these are our colleagues and these are our, 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 our partners to use the term very broadly. So I think that, that these process steps will, will about being very mindful of them and making a commitment to you as a board that this is what we want to do will, uh, will bring us to that. So with that, I'll say uh, thank you, Paul and, and Mr. Chairman, and uh, pass it back to you, Paul. Well, uh, uh, no, thank you. I, I, Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I have nothing to add. Uh, I think at this point, uh, we're just uh, interested in getting the board's feedback on this and uh, it's presented here for, for exactly that purpose. Fair enough, thank you, Mr. Jankowski. Any questions? Uh, I saw uh, Councillor Monkoff swain and then Councillor Finstad, go ahead. Yeah, Glenn was first, you, you wanna go first, Glenn? You're speaking, go ahead, but Okay, no, no worries. And I, I know West, the, the hands just kind of pop up all over the place. Um, so hard, hard to track. 
Um, so f first, thanks for the overview and, and appreciate the, the thought process going into it. Um, you know, a, a key a key challenge that I had initially was there was a bit of concern or confusion around uh, are we sharing that information that comes from the board with our municipality uh, liaisons? And you know, you clearly answered that in that slide presentation um, uh, where where you indicated that yes, that that is that's working. And and also thank you to the to the staff for getting. Uh, the, these packages, um, you know, out to us, uh, and also more importantly, uh, on online uh, three days prior to, as as per the bylaws. So I've seen a big improvement in that. So thank you for that. Um, I, I guess the, the the piece that I still have a question around, and, and um, is just around the process of connecting with those municipal liaisons. Um, and, and you know, the, the reason why I, I'm still going down this path is. I recognize, you know, and, and, and Brian, you touched on it in terms of the, you know, the challenge of, of taking off your, your um, city hat and, and, and putting on, on your, your board um, hat. Um, but the, the question, uh, the reason, you know, that, that this is so important is, is ultimately, you know, administration, uh, the, our own administrations, you know, provide recommendations on, you know, on, on how, we, how we run our municipality and transit included. And so we've got to make sure that, that those folks are, are included. And, and you know, I've, I've been on this for, for a while now um, that I, I, I haven't seen the administrations be included enough. And that, that, that makes me nervous. I felt as though it was kind of falling on me. Um, to be able to brief uh, our administration, and, and that, that's that's um, I don't always have the, all the information, so I, I, I see the attempt to, to include there, and, and there was a bullet point that that um, spoke to it uh, about you know the um, EMTSC speaking with the municipal liaisons. But again, we, ha we had a meeting today, we have a meeting today, uh, and there was no municipal liaison meeting prior to this one. So that, that didn't happen. So I'm, I'm just curious on, you know, the, the structure of the process that, that uh, with a Brian or Paul that you guys are thinking about of, you know, yes, you send these out to us five days in advance and they get posted publicly three days in advance. We've got that process. But at what point in, in this cycle uh, is it admin going to be kind of, uh, are those municipal li liaisons going to be briefed and brought in? Have, have you guys thought through that at all? start and then uh, Brian might add in. Um, I think we're at the point where we're now reviewing how exactly that would happen. I think the the intent that I certainly um, am, am working towards is that there is a common understanding at the local level and at the regional level of each other's interests. I think that the challenge is, is that there have been in the past um, there has been a liaison structure. Uh, there has been a variety of, of staff that were involved in that structure. And I think we need to revise it uh, to be more specific in terms of what it is that's going to dis get discussed in what forum or what venue. Uh, I think we need to ensure that the right strategic discussions take place at the right strategic level uh, across the, 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 the member municipal um, collective, if I can put it that way, uh, project related discussions take place at a project level and so on. Uh, so we, we need to restructure that liaison process because in my, uh, from my perspective, it hasn't been perfect and it hasn't worked all that well. Um, we certainly haven't been getting a, a on our side of the fence, getting a, uh, an accurate representation of what are the true local concerns that could feed into or could contribute to our consideration and our drafting of regional perspectives as we, as we bring those forward. So it's, it's a work in progress. It's something that we need to revise, refine. Uh, and I know that Brian's got that on his work plan. I think the, uh, the representation that you saw in Brian's graphic about having the right sorts of discussion or the right sorts of people and involved in the right sorts of discussion is the first attempt to try to rationalize that um, because uh, until now there's been sort of a, a smorgasbord of, of points discussed at that liaison meeting that hasn't led to really productive information sharing. We need to make sure that we get to a point where the right information is shared with the right people and contributes to the right briefing of both local councils or member municipal councils and of you as our board. Uh, and that the perspectives are brought forward in, in both venues in the most appropriate way. Um, I, and I think that's a reasonably, um, a, a 
collective to strive for. Uh, a, a, a true understanding of what the, the, the member municipal perspectives are and a true understanding of what the regional perspectives or regional interests are by each party, I think is, is what we're going to strive for. Um, I did, I, I, I was a little careful and in some of the earlier iterations of the presentation that you just saw, there was more of a focus on consensus. And while I would love for us to be able to get to a point of consensus with all of the, uh, all, all of the member municipal staff on all issues, I think it's reasonable to point out to the board that there are going to be times where there, the regional perspective is going to be a little different than that of the collective or collection of local perspectives. And we're going to have to struggle through that. We're going to have to work our way through that because there are there, there is a different mandate here than, than there is at, at each member municipal council. Um, so we recognize that. We recognize that issues that you as a board are going to consider. Um, but we, we want to make sure that as we're crafting our recommendations for your consideration, we are aware of the proper local perspectives. We consider that, we bring that forward. Similarly, as we're crafting the regional, regional perspective, we want to ensure that the right levels in your member municipalities are also aware of what it is that we're thinking. And we need to we need to rejig that process to make sure that the right people are involved in the right discussions. So long, long explanation, um, short story, work in progress, we get the point, we do have to revise and rejig the way it's been done in the past. And, and I mean, all for making sure that the, the meetings and the conversations are efficient with the right people. Um, just know that I will be very interested in, in that rejigging to use your word and, and how that process goes forward. The, the one thing I'll, I'll stress here is while, while you're talking to the local municipalities, um, you know, I, I get the sense of thought is that we're only thinking with our own member municipalities, but our, our staff are. Um, you know, have to think on that regional basis all the time, and 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 certainly that 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 thought process, you know, comes into that evaluation. So, I mean, ultimately, I, I feel like I've, I've got a strong connection um, through through the board, and we have the you know the, those those pre conversations that that works. Um, but but I, what I can't see, um, and what I, I need to see that improvement on, is just um, through that administration to keep us going. And to your point, um, ensuring that those local perspectives are are brought in, and, and obviously it's just about the way we're asking for that information. So, um, yeah, I won't, I won't say anything more in here. Uh, you know, I was hoping that would have a bit more than a work in progress or rejigging um, coming up. But, you know, when, when we get, I recognize, Brian, that that's a, that's a lot of work and every municipality is, is different and who you're talking to. And maybe it's not going to be a cookie cutter approach. But um, I, that is something that I'm very, very interested in because I've got to make sure that our administration's on side. Um, with this and, and, and aware of the direction of the board and, and can help um, provide that input in, into it going forward because it, um, it's simply the re respectfully the organization of EMT itself it's it is not big enough yet right we're, we're just we're very small and and you guys are dealing with multiple files with very very few folks so we've got to be able to lean on those municipal contacts uh, who've got the expertise in this sort of stuff uh, while we're in that trans transition period so I don't have anything more to add I do appreciate the update um, but I you know as this process kind of gets more refined I would like to, to see that come back just so I have a bit more um, comfort there that the, our administration is going to be folded in so I'll leave it there and, and, and uh, appreciate the opportunity to speak here. Thank you, Councillor Macau Swain. Uh, appreciate those comments. Councillor Finstad and then Councillor Harris. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to, again, remind myself, remind everybody that we on this board are here with that regional perspective, albeit keeping our, our local needs and wants in, in focus as well. But the real reason we're here is not today or tomorrow, it's for that five, 10, 15, 20 years down the road, what this regional transit looks like is, is, us, is up to us today because that's what we're striving towards is, is there gonna be some short-term disagreements most likely? Uh, I really appreciate the fact that pre-establishment uh, of the commission as a committee, we were, our goal was to reach a consensus on almost every decision that was reached. 
that's not possible now in a, a board structure and nor is it healthy, I don't think, to be constantly seeking consensus. Uh, that leads to groupthink and that's the last thing that this, uh, that this board needs is groupthink. We need to be cognizant of what our individual needs are, but we really need to be cognizant of this. We're here for the long haul. We're here for the next 10, 15, 20 years. And what this looks like down the road when it's really gonna be critically important is what we do today. And uh, I do uh, appreciate the fact that we do need to keep our uh, municipal liaisons in, in touch and, and uh, informed, but it's really what's best for the region. And this is what this board is all about, in my opinion. Thank you, Councillor Finstead. Councillor Harris. Yeah, um, I think that we have to look at the, uh, the dichotomy of administration and board related information and functions. And uh, I personally, as a board member, have been appointed uh, by my municipality, as you all have as well, to represent the matters at the board table. And so we have to use uh, good judgment uh, and appropriate consideration to determine when to share things with our administration that are quote unquote board related things. Operationally, um, if the uh, staff and as we ramp up operationally, um, the commission staff, ultimately, we're going to have to have ongoing liaison and discussion operationally, uh, which isn't necessarily something that has to uh, be anything but sanctioned by the board. It's a policy, it's a project, it's a program, whatever. We approve those at the board level. We have eight members of this board. I don't want to see it become 29 with a whole bunch of administration feeding into that decision making process. So there's a balance there. And, and in deference to, um, to Sam's comments, um, I think it's up to us to be aware of the matters before the board first and foremost, because that's our job, that's our responsibility. And we have to bring that regional lens to our, to our conversations and our discussions. And so um, I think it's up to us as we move forward to determine at board level, the information that we share with our administration, not that it goes to them first before us. So I want to underscore that I, as a board member, expect to see that information before administration. And we collectively as a board will make the determination of what we will share uh, and when we will share and how it will be shared with, with our respective councils. And I think that's, that's just a normal flow. And I see that quite clearly in a number of other regional boards that I've been involved with in the time that I've been in office. And I think the most recent one that I would, would uh, draw reference to is our wastewater commission, for example, which has been functioning in the context very efficiently for a long period of time. The information that comes to the board through our agendas in that regard comes to the board. We ultimately do share that information with our administrations but if it's stuff that's coming to the board for board consideration, it's shared with the board first. And then we determine the right uh, and tenor of the, of, the, of the sharing or the conversation that we have. So that's kind of what I would be the most comfortable with, but I don't wanna see a bunch of stuff coming out of administration going to our administrations before we see it, because we're ultimately responsible to ensure that that has been vetted through our administrative process and is, com is, is compliant with our policy and our procedures that we adopt over time. So I, that's my perspective on it. And I think that's not to take anything away from our administration. Uh, and you can seek whatever level of, of involvement you want with your administration as we go forward. But around the board table, it's the eight of us supported by our administrative structure that ultimately has to have that sober second thought as to how we share that information going forward. Now that's my point of view. And if I'm if I'm wrong or if I'm in the minority, then I'll stand corrected. So I, I would uh, leave it to the rest of you to determine whether I'm picking up on this properly uh, because I'm not sure what I anticipated from Sam. I almost got the impression that it has to go contemporaneously to our administration at the same time it goes to the board. I'm not necessarily there, but ultimately our administrations are important. They help to support us in one regard, but we have to look at it from a regional perspective as we sit at this table with this group of folks. Thank you, Councillor Harris. Um, 
Councillor Knack, any uh, comments? Uh, Councillor Laurie, uh, before I weigh in myself? Uh, just, a, just a little bit, I, I mean, uh, so appreciate the conversation that's been going on and, and um, I, I feel, uh, so what, what I've heard uh, from Councillor Monkoff Swain and from the others uh, isn't unlike what I what I feel like I, I typically have received over my, my two years now serving on Alberta municipalities. So meaning that typically our administration does have access to information in advance of the meeting and they provide us with um, provide me with a, a short briefing not to say this is this is what you have to do, but be aware of this, this might be a point um, that, that should be talked about uh, from the perspective of the city, but not exclusively from that perspective so um so i i think in my mind that's how i envisioned it a, a, a an ability for information to be shared so that um just a, a, a an additional pair of eyes can provide some guidance and some advice as we go into a more thoughtful discussion but i i also appreciate the concern of, of not wanting to have you know 29 people essentially in the room versus the eight um, I don't think that has to happen with with what I heard, and and again, I, I stand to be corrected, but that's not what I was hearing from Councillor Munkoff Swain. I, I get the impression to be more along the lines of of what currently happens in in the case of Edmonton, as an example. Thank you, uh, Councillor Nack, uh, Councillor Laurie. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I certainly think that the the information sharing is imperative i mean obviously it does have to happen and, and we do need to have those parties engaged um i i struggle a little bit with it because you know when we when we start separating and although we are here as appointed by our councils we are here appointed to the emtsc board on behalf of the emtsc and so we we do have to take that into consideration that the decisions that we make at this table there is that potential that we may make an entirely different decision when we are back around our council table. Um, obviously, we want to work as, as best as possible to avoid any situations where that may happen, and that bridge of communication and information sharing should help that. Um, but I also think it can get to the point where we might miss our mandate as members of this board. And if, if we are more so sitting at this board representing our municipalities and and trying to implore the will of our municipalities rather than sitting around this table um, making the best decisions for the emtsc that's where i do hire a little bit of concern on that so i just i just recommend a little bit of caution as we move forward with that uh you know there there does need to be that information pathway there does need to be that bridge but at the same time uh, we have certain responsibilities around this table and certain responsibilities around our council table that don't necessarily always jive. Thank you, Councillor Laurie. Uh, before I get back to you, uh, Councillor Makov, uh, Mayor Craddock, uh, Councillor uh, Houston, any comments? Care to weigh in? Uh, if you're waiting for me, I really respect what uh, Councillor Laurie just said. Um, that would be my take as well. That's all I got. Thank you very much, Mayor Craddock. Uh, Councillor Houston? No, nothing to add. I think uh, I think a lot of points have been touched on by uh, all the other board members. So I think I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Um, Councillor Makoff Swain, back to you. Yeah, thanks. And, and maybe I'll summarize a little bit differently. I, I, I'm not looking to get administration involved to, to brief me to put on my Beaumont hat to, to come here. I'm looking for administration to be more directly involved with um, with the EMTSC. You know, we can compare ourselves to these other boards um, and commissions that are set up, but those are mature organizations that have been running for years. We just aren't there yet. We're about to go into the most important thing that this whole board is going to do. Um, and, and rolling out a, a, a service plan and operationalizing this uh, and, and to, to have five days notice and then to try to figure that out. And, and you know, that, that's just 
that's just not going to work. Uh, and so, you know, we, we talk, we've seen the service plan initially that was initially rolled out, had, had no input from administration, you know, and, and, you know, could have been avoided if there were some touch points. So the point I'm trying to stress is I'm not looking for admin, uh, EMTSC to sit down with an admin and say, okay, here's agenda item one, what do you think? Here's agenda item two, what do you think? It's a, it's that general touch base. This is what we're planning on doing over the next couple of months. What, what are you hearing in your community? That sort of input to come to the board, I think that's what makes you um, understand that better. So sorry if, if I didn't make that clear early on, but the, the individual agenda packages, sure. Yeah, come to us. We understand that we can work our way through it, but it's the bigger picture that, that I'm worried about um, that we're going to miss from the, from the member municipalities uh, as we roll into this important piece. I mean, ultimately, you know, this board, uh, you know, we get to a mature state where we've got all that, and then all of our administrations don't need to be involved in it at all. That's the ideal scenario, but we're not there yet. Uh, we don't have enough um, support there, and, and that's no reflection on you, Paul. It's just a, a, a cycle of where we are in the journey. So I just, I just think it's going to be critical as we start to look at these service plans and how this is all going to roll out. Um, that, that we, we need to make sure we've got that local touch. So uh, I'm, I'm confident what I heard today from, from Paul and, and Brian that, you know, you're going to go away and figure out what that touch point is and how you're going to work out that process. And I don't want to dictate it here. My point is just make sure that we're, we're keeping that pulse with the administration so they're, they're tucked in. And then, yeah, if I if I go through the agenda package and I need some, some advice on item 6C, I'm more than happy to have that conversation. But um, the, the day to day kind of broader um, strategic side of things, I think we've still got to keep us tight uh, as we move into that. So that, that's all I'd have to say on that. But I, I do appreciate the discussion and points from everyone uh, and, and hope that, uh, that that's a bit clearer the second time around for me. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Mankov Swain. Uh, Councillor Harris. And I appreciate that clarification, Sam. Um, and also, um, uh, Councillor Laurie's comments, I thought were well taken as well. Um, you know, there are there are obviously consultation operationally, which needs to take place. I guess what I was getting at is the stuff that is quote unquote board needs to be coming to the board first, not to our administrations, to us first, and then we will deal with that. And then a communication process filtering down from above, ultimately. Uh, and those would be things that we're in the process of developing, like policies, um, like operating procedures that, that ultimately, I guess, we have to sanction as a board. And so if, if that's the case, then I'm comfortable with that. And then by right, we are doing the things that we need to do as a board. Um, we just happen to also be as, as, uh, as elected councillors appointed. Uh, with with uh, Councillor Nack's situation, I mean, he's obviously in a, in a different league relative to the order of magnitude of the issues that are kind of flashing down the, down the pipe at him, I suspect. Obviously, Edmonton's a much larger um, operation in many regards. So, um, you know, I think that we as board members should be cognizant of, of our responsibilities. And I believe that we can all dispense or just, you know, just we can put it out as we need to, because that's ultimately our responsibility. And I, I personally have got the time and I will put the effort into making that, uh, you know, so, so our decision-making process is, is fair, timely and accurate at the board level. So, and, and you know, with Paul, and when we get an operating person in place and we're doing all that operational stuff, yeah, the, it, obviously you're gonna get better bang for the buck input from our administrations than from me, for example. So anyway, so this has been a good conversation. And I guess that's, as Sam puts it, we are a work in progress. And, uh, and uh, I think we'll, uh, we'll get to a point where we'll be able to look back on this and say, yeah, well, that was, was fun. <laughs> uh, well, on that note, let me, uh, let me give my, my comments too. And I, I too appreciate the, uh, the commentary around the, uh, the board table here, uh, virtual board table. I think there's board governance issues, and then there's engagement with the uh, with the local municipalities. And at this particular time, we need to uh, be doing both well. And uh, engaging our local municipalities is important because uh, we are forming. And to your point, Sam, they need to be engaged here because this is a new entity, and how we operationalize is important. And they need to feel comfortable about it going forward. As a board, we still are governors and we need to govern right. Uh, but that, uh, that doesn't preclude 
uh, a, a holistic uh, engagement with our uh, with our uh, municipalities and, and their administration as well. I think if we all are brought along the the road together, we just we'll find success at the end of the day so much easier. And uh, to that end, uh, I know uh, Mr. Jankowski and Mr. Bechtel, you have heard the uh, the comments of the board and. Uh, yeah, and so just as just before I finish, I'll, I'll just give you a, a brief uh, rundown of how it happens in St. Albert. And it's basically the same way uh, where the, the, the board package comes out and then administration uh, would brief the rest of council on how the commission is doing. And so they need to be able to do that appropriately. Like, they come to me when it comes to talk about, you know, where do you think the commission is going as an overall, uh, those sorts of things. And I relate the, the decisions of the board, but administration briefs all of us in terms of what's St. Albert and what's their perspective on, on where the, uh, the commission is going. And it's important for them to be engaged so that they got a, so they got a current and holistic picture of what's going on. However, my own council understands that my role as a board member of the commission is to re represent the region and make decisions appropriately. So I, I think we're not at cross purposes here. I'll leave it to you, Mr. Jankowski and Mr. Bechtel to, to hear the disparate comments here, but the, the, uh, the vision of, of uh, working together to get this uh, commission up and running for the betterment of the region, we'll leave that with you. But uh, to Sam's point, let's keep this a live issue so that uh, we can uh, just uh, be engaged as we go forward. Uh, Councillor Mokoff Swain, can I ask you to make the motion then that's uh, before us? You bet, as I uh, just move my Zoom screen so I can actually read what's on the table here. Um, <clears throat> so I'll, I'll move that the board accept the information as presented and provide input for future consideration. Fair enough. Uh, accept the motion. Any comments? None for me. Councillor Houston, on debate? That was the vote? Okay, well, in that just case... Just the vote, just in advance. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me call the question then. Using the raise the hand function, uh, indicate your, uh, your vote here. Councillor Knack? Yes, thank you. Perfect. That's passed unanimously. <laughs> Great conversation and uh, an important conversation. Thank you very much, everybody, for your uh, for your uh, learned and, and thoughtful input to that. So we have a motion to move in camera. There's uh, probably the uh, the information that we're going to talk about is branding and uh, a few other things. So can I ask a board member to move? Uh, the motion that's before us. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councillor Harris. Uh, that we move in camera, raising the hand function, please indicate your desire. And uh, ah, we're all virtual here. Thank you. Then that's unanimous. We are now in uh, in camera. And Agata, I'll wait. Uh, for you to send out the, uh, and we'll all join the breakout room. All right, see you in the breakout room, folks.
Mr. Chair, you're muted. Just want to make a brief public statement about our in-camera uh, session for public uh, consumption. We had a brief presentation on our branding strategy by Berlin, and we talked about strategic planning. We are uh, in public now, and uh, pursuant to what uh, happened in camera, we have a motion that we will entertain uh, um, publicly. So can I ask one of the board members to make this particular motion? Happy to. Thank you, Councillor Neck. So it's that the uh, board accept as information the materials and discussions presented in camera and strike an ad hoc committee to finalize the recommended name and brand for the Edmonton region's new transit service to be brought to the board for final approval and that the committee be comp uh, composed of the following uh, directors of the board, Glenn Finstad, Andrew Nack, Stuart Houston, and Sam Monkoff-Swain, uh, EMTSC senior leadership team, EMTSC legal counsel, and Berlin Communications. Thank you very much, Councillor Nack. I uh, accept the motion. Any opening debate? Okay, any uh, councillor wishing to weigh in on debate? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Please raise your hand uh, and vote accordingly. And that is passed unanimously. Thank you very much. And uh, again, uh, thank you to everyone who volunteered to be a part of that particular uh, activity. Before we uh, adjourn, uh, I'd like to just uh, ask Mr. Jankowski, to give us brief updates uh, uh, around the office, uh, just briefly, if you don't mind. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, happy to do so. Um, Good news, uh, we've been working with the, uh, the uh, landlord's contractor and uh, all the walls are now in, the, uh, all the heating and HVAC systems are in, the uh, ceiling is almost completed, the T bars for the ceiling have been put in, uh, all of the doors are in, the contractor's getting ready to paint the entire space. Um, the the uh, the cabling for all of the technology that will be in place will be going in next week. So we're we're in pretty good shape to take uh, possession, if not right on January first, certainly by the middle of the week, uh, sorry, middle of the month in January. So uh, I'm looking forward to uh, to getting to that point. The uh, the the situation in terms of the board's meeting area. Uh, I'm happy to report that that area is being now fitted out as well uh, in terms of the, uh, the wall coverings, the, wall, the painting, the flooring and so on. Uh, the one delay that the contractor has advised us that he's going to uh, experience is in putting in place the movable doors that, uh, or the movable walls that uh, will break up that room for eventual use as three separate meeting areas. But uh, we are, uh, we're, we're in good shape as far as the entirety of the office is concerned. Um, also great news with regards to some of the solutions that have been put in place with regards to furnishing. And here I need to express significant thanks on behalf of the entire commission and certainly on behalf of the administration to Councillor Knack and to City Manager Andre Corbu uh, and Deputy City Manager Gord Seabrick. After reaching out to them in, uh, in over the course of the last three or four weeks, uh, the City of Edmonton has graciously donated a significant amount of surplus furniture to allow us to outfit primarily the office spaces in the new, uh, the new head office, uh, which will allow us to move into that area in January, February, um, and more significantly have a tremendous positive impact on the 2020 to operating costs. So uh, through the donation that the City of Edmonton has provided, generously provided, we should be able to save a significant amount of money on the capital costs that the board actually approved 
uh, in, as part of the budget approval uh, earlier today, earlier in this meeting. And I'm extremely thankful for that donation of the furniture. For the biggest, the biggest reason for that thanks is related to the delivery time of all of the new furniture that will be primarily now dedicated towards the board meeting area, the, the meeting facility. The, uh, the supply chain, as I've indicated in earlier, is continues to be problematic and so we are going to be experiencing delays in outfitting the furniture for the meeting area um, we're hopeful that now with the order that we're placing that that furniture will be in place towards the end of the first quarter uh, but even in the absence of that new furniture the donation that the city of edmonton has provided will allow us as staff to get into that new facility and uh, not to uh, to to have to continue to lease these current two offices that uh, that we've been leasing for the last number of months so again thank you very much to the city of edmonton thank you councillor knack for your leadership on that uh, and please convey our thanks to the administration as well well done andrew Thank you for that update, Mr. Jankowski. Looking around the, uh, the screen, uh, if there are no other items, thank you for your time this afternoon, uh, board members, and uh, I'll, de I'll declare the meeting adjourned. Thank you, everybody. And everybody, please have a very Merry Christmas if we don't chat before then. And uh, wishing each one of you all the best of the holiday season. Take care. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thanks, everyone. Merry Christmas. All right. Bye now.